Yes. Uh-huh. Right, okay. Thank you, officer. Bye. He says he doesn't give a shit. Well, that's okay. Back to the review? Yeah. Hey Jay, someone's nicked your sofa, mate. Are you fucking kidding me? So last time we went through the story, so now let's talk about the gameplay. First off, gem whoring is back in force as gems are now even more densely populated over a much larger area. It's slightly less of a priority though because the upgrade system is a bit different. In Gravity Rush 1 you had full control over what you upgraded using your gems. I would always start with the gravity gauge and recharge time, particularly the latter because if leveled up enough you can run out of gas in mid-air, fall for a couple of seconds and recover without losing too much ground. In Gravity Rush 2, these are upgraded automatically after you complete each chapter, I guess to stop you from becoming too powerful, thereby making the game too easy. I personally preferred the old upgrade system, but the new one means my only foci are my gravity kick, special attacks, evade, ground attacks, gravity slide, and stasis field. The combination of there being less to upgrade and there being more gems scattered around the world meant that I never did any side missions. In Gravity Rush 1 I had to use my gems to unlock side missions which I had to complete loads of to get more gems so I could power up. In Gravity Rush 2 I never did any side missions except the ones that unlocked me costumes. I mentioned in the last review that I would have liked a bit more on the costume customization. Gravity Rush 1 only offering a total of 5 costumes including the default one. Gravity Rush 2 features all the costumes from the previous game, if you have the save data from the last game on your PS4 that is, and also throws in some new costumes which you unlock by doing certain side missions. I also got a couple of free download costumes such as the Dark Angel costume and the whoa okay. I know I said last time that I didn't have a problem with what cat wore, but this costume might be going a bit too far. She's hardly wearing anything on her bottom half. I feel so dirty making her wear this. I suppose the get out clause is that the costume is from another game, but how old even is Cat anyway? You know what? The less I think about that the better. Instead, let's talk about some of the side missions that earn you the costumes. As far as I can tell, there are a total of 12 non-downloadable costumes, including the ones from the previous game. For example, the school uniform, which you unlock by going undercover as a student to investigate strange goings on at the school. You can also unlock the idol costume by taking a mission where you dress up like a famous singer and try to get from A to B without touching anyone, if only Gary Glitter could have done the same. One of my favourite costumes to acquire was the waitress costume because Gravity Rush's take on marketing is to kidnap people and bring them to your shop against their will. Psst. Hey. Kids, come check out this new shop. Just don't tell your parents about this, okay? Aside from that, you've also got the Carly Angel costume, which you get by pretending to be her to promote Ojin's ice cream business. Yeah, Ojin is back, and his brat son has grown up a bit since you left. This shouldn't come as a surprise, but these two are very quick to betray you when you become an enemy of the state, and yet Kat still helps them even after all the shit from the previous game. I get it, I didn't save your house, would you like fries with that, you self-entitled fucks? I know I said Kat was a likeable character, and she is, but her number one character flaw is that she's too nice. She lets people take advantage of her, and that's not okay. To summarise, I actually quite enjoyed the side missions because a big part of this game's appeal to me was using my powers to do menial things. Within Gravity Rush 2, there are also online treasure hunts. If you find a treasure chest, you can use your camera to take a picture of it, which you can upload to help other players online. Doing this, you acquire dusty tokens, which let you access various unlockables, like costumes for example, and talismans. I never even talked about the talismans because I never used them. You find them when mining, and you can combine three of them to create a super talisman which improves your gravity shifting when equipped. Let's talk about visuals for a second. Gravity Rush 2 is a great looking game, noticeably better than its predecessor, but Gravity Rush 1 was a handheld release, so a graphical update is really the least I would expect from a sequel. The music is about as good as it was in Gravity Rush 1, and you can still send civilians hurtling to their deaths. Aside from that, people still treat Cat like their personal errand girl, like in the mission where Cat has to deliver some party invitations to a bunch of rich people, but they won't accept the invitations until you do them a favour. First off, you have to retrieve a balloon from a little girl, I'm getting Spider-Man 2 flashbacks, and once you've done that, the next woman you come to decides her trees need watering, and since it's the poor's duty to do whatever the rich say, I ended up having to use my stasis field to water some plants. 
I decided to go one further and offer my services as a window cleaner. There you go, you fucking cow. Always happy to help. So, how has the combat changed? Well, for the first quarter of the game, you don't actually deal with the Nevi all that much except when mining in the Rift Plains. Instead, you fight men with guns, sometimes in giant robots. Using your gravity powers to kill people is incredibly satisfying and something I'm really glad they added. On the downside, the game is a lot more stingy with special attacks than the last one. In Gravity Rush 1, you just had to wait for your special attack to recharge, but Gravity Rush 2 makes you fill up a meter by defeating enemies, and it takes fucking forever. I used to love using the Spiralling Claw to mop up Small Fry in Gravity Rush 1, but Gravity Rush 2 barely let me use it at all. I'm kind of sad about that, because it's such a spectacular move. Ah oh well. With the frequency of my special attacks cut, I had to rely on other techniques. Gravity Rush 2 shifts the focus of combat onto the stasis field, and I had to rely on it during boss fights because attacking at close range isn't all that easy. Stealth is also very difficult when you ragdoll through the air to get around and pick up everything around you as you go, but the game is pretty lenient when it comes to stealth, so it's not that big a deal. One of Gravity Rush 2's main gimmicks is that it's added a couple of new shifting modes. The first is Lunar Mode, which despite its classy name, is even less dignified than gravity shifting. The other is Jupiter Mode, where you become heavier than black metal. You switch between the three gravity styles by flicking the touchpad, and the three special attacks have been assigned one to each style. In Normal Style, you can do the Spiralling Claw. In Lunar Style, you can do the Gravity Typhoon. And in Jupiter Style, ah, the Micro Black Hole is actually useful in this game. In fact, on the rare occasion I was able to use my special attack, it almost always ended up being this one because it allows you to deal massive amounts of damage if you can get in close enough and use it before the enemy runs away. Jupiter Style also allows you to charge up your gravity kick for devastating damage, or create a ball of debris which is more effective than throwing objects in normal style if slower. It makes shifting very clumsy and awkward, but I circumvented this by staying on the ground and throwing debris balls at my enemies from far away. All in all, Jupiter Mode was one of my favourite things they added to this game. As for Lunar Style, well, it's more of a hindrance than a help, but it allows you to make great jumps without shifting, which is only useful when you have your powers blocked. Yep, the game makes you do things without shifting just like Gravity Rush 1 did, but unlike in Gravity Rush 1, where the game kept stripping Cat of her powers, honestly, it happened so often I was beginning to get bored, Gravity Rush 2 only blocks certain elements. There's always something you can still use, be it Lunar Style for precarious platforming when you can't shift, or the Stasis Field to fling shit at enemies. There are missions where you're not allowed to shift, mostly side missions, but I'm okay with that because they're optional. Constantly being stripped of my powers was one of the main issues I had with Gravity Rush 1, and I'm glad its successor was able to find a way of making me puzzle solve without it getting repetitive, even if it did lock me in Jupiter mode or pain in the arse mode to do it. You all know that Gravity Rush has one of my favourite premises of all time. I sometimes get the feeling that Cat is a little too OP with her finishing moves, but the core concept of flying that is essentially falling in a chosen direction is something that will never get old for me. In fact, I kind of wish this game had been around when I was a kid. I have to commend Gravity Rush 2 for taking a concept that was already amazing to begin with and expanding it further. I don't necessarily think it was perfectly executed, but they gave it a good go, and the game has earned itself a score of 89 for its efforts. It's as good as Gravity Rush 1 in all honesty, but following the story relies on you having played the first game, and it does repeat a few things. Will I play it again? Stupid question, obviously I will. The Gravity Rush games are now up there with my favourite games of all time, including the Sonic Adventure games and AC2. Good times. So thus ends another review of a very enjoyable, but also slightly confusing game. That's it for this review, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to buy a new sofa. It's, it's not been a good day for me. No. I want to fit my fucking wallet!